Hello friends, in this uh, revision lecture of the anatomy of the nose and paranasal ear sinuses, we will cover these objectives. Uh, the first one is the nasal septum or the medial wall of the nose. Uh, it divides the uh, nasal cavity into two uh, asymmetric uh, halves and it is covered by mucous membrane and it has a, a hard part and a mobile part and it is formed by bones as well as cartilages. The bones of the nasal septum will be the principal bone that is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. This one is the perpendicular plate of ethmoid bone and the vomer. These are two important bones. Along with that, there are small accessory bones like the nasal spine of the frontal bone, the spinoid crust as well as the rostrum and the nasal uh, crust formed by the articulation of the palatine process of the maxilla as well as the horizontal plate of the, the palatine bone, these two bones. Also par forms the bony part, but the main two structures the perpendicular plate of ethmoid as well as the the omer. and the cartilages which will be forming will be the uh, the nasal septum mainly the nasal septum which will form the uh, uh, the septum of the uh, uh, nasal cavity along with that the septal process of the inferior nasal cartilage as well as the there is a small cartilage here called as the omero nasal cartilage where the organ of jacobson where the main uh, olfactory uh, part might be uh, present okay so the main septum uh, cartilaginous uh, structure will be the septal cartilage itself okay coming to the arterial supply it is supplied by three to four main arteries anterior superior part will be by the anterior ethmoidal branch of the ophthalmic artery and the posterior inferior part will be by the spinopalatine and greater palatine branches of the maxillary artery and the mobile part the anterior most part will be supplied by the, the septal branches of the superior labial branch of the facial artery. So these three four arteries will be supplying the nasal septum and there is a very important area called as the little area where the uh, the septal branch of the facial long spinopalatine as well as the terminal branch of the greater palatine arteries will anastomose. This is the place where all the three arteries will anastomose and that is called as the little area of epistaxis where even slight trauma might lead to uh, severe profuse bleeding. Okay. Coming to the venous drainage, it will be uh, drained by many veins. Anterior superior part will be by the superior ophthalmic vein, posterior inferior part by the pterygoid venous plexus. Here is the pterygoid venous plexus shown. Here will be the superior ophthalmic vein, the mobile part of the septum uh, into the jugular veins, and the upper part of the septum into the veins accompanying the olfactory nerves and the drain into the inferior cerebral veins, into the cerebral cavity itself. Okay. Uh, coming to the lymphatic drainage, the anterior part will be draining into the submandibular group of limb nodes and the intermediate and posterior part will be draining into the retropharyngeal group of limb nodes and a small part on the roof will be drained into the, uh, into the uh, cranial cavity into the CSF. Coming to the nerve supply, nerve supply on the roof of the nose it will be uh, mainly for, by the olfactory zone by 15 to 20 bun, uh, bundles of the olfactory nerves. Uh, which will be mainly kind of helpful for the, uh, the sensation of smell. Then the anterior part will be by the anterior ethmoidal branch of the nasociliary uh, nerve. Intermediate part will be by the spinopalatine branch of the pterygopalatine ganglion. The posterior part will be by the short uh, spinopalatine nerves, nerves of the pterygoid canal as well as the nasal branches. All have not been shown here. Uh, the inferior part by the anterior uh, superior alveolar nerve and the mobile part will be from the external nasal nerves. All these nerves will be supplying the receptor. Coming to the lateral wall of the nose, there are uh, the lateral wall of nose is not smooth, but it has uh, concave. Uh, see, these are the concave, they are the three nasal concave, the superior nasal, middle as well as the inferior nasal concave. Below this concave, each concave, there is a space that will be called as meatus. There is, so there is a superior meatus, middle meatus below the uh, uh, middle concave and inferior meatus below the inferior concave. Conca is the singular and concave will be the plural. Okay, so this is the superior conca, middle conca, and inferior conca, and the meatus will be below superior uh, middle as well as the inferior meatus. Coming to the openings in the lateral wall of the nose, uh, nasal cavity, and below the superior, above the superior conca, above the superior conca, there will be opening of the spinoid sinus. Okay, uh, below the superior concha, that is into the superior meatus, there will be opening of the posterior ethmoidal sinus. Into the middle meatus will be very important openings. Uh, there is a bulla, ethmoidal bulla here because of the ethmoid uh, air sinus, uh, uh, which is elevated. 
below the ethmoidal bulla there is a semicircular structure called as the hiatus semilinearis where all the structures will be opening uh, one is the main opening will be for the maxillary sinus along with that there will be opening of the middle ethmoidal sinus as well as even posterior and and frontonasal duct and uh, into the inferior meatus will be the opening of the uh, nasolacrimal duct uh, coming to the paranasal air sinuses Uh, these are the air conditioning bony spaces around the nasal cavity that's why they are called as paranasal beside the nose okay and they are lined by the respiratory epithelium and they are uh, very small or rudimentary in at birth but they were well developed at puberty and there are four important pairs one is the frontal uh, sinus then we have the maxillary sinus the largest one then we have the ethmoidal air sinus and the sphenoidal air sinus the names depend on which bone they are present okay what is the function of this paranasal air sinus one is the, they condition the air as well as humidify as well as increase the temperature as well as decrease the temperature okay up to, uh, to the body temperature uh, the second is resonating they acts as the resonating resonating chambers producing the the resonant sound the third is they lighten the the facial bones themselves and the fourth is they secrete uh, mucus maxillary sinus and here is the the ethmoidal air sinus this is the frontal air sinus and a sphenoidal air sinus will be behind which cannot be seen by this section so we are talking about the, the largest one that the maxillary air sinus so this is the largest paranasal air sinus present within the body of the maxilla and it is roughly pyramidal as you can see it is roughly pyramidal with the apex here the base here the roof and the floor so uh, the size is almost 3.5 cm into 2.5 cm into 3.25 cm and the apex is directed toward the zygomatic process and the base is toward the nasal surface of the body of the maxilla the roof will be near the uh, the orbit and the floor will be uh, by the uh, the alveolar process okay so this will be the maxilla maxillary sinus and its opening will be into the the uh, the floor of the hiatus semilinearis below the bulla ethmoidalis into the middle meatus okay coming to the blood supply it will be supplied by the anterior middle as well as posterior superior alveolar vessels of the maxillary vessel okay and the lymphatic drainage will be into the submandibular group of lymph nodes and the nerve supply will be by the anterior middle and posterior superior alveolar nerves branches of the maxillary as well as the infraorbital nerve frontal sinus will be present between the two tablets of the squamous uh, front frontal bone the squamous part of the frontal bone size will be 3 cm in 2.5 cm in 1.8 1.8 cm opens into the uh, the middle meatus to the ethmoidal uh, infundibulum uh, and they had a similaris blood supply will be by the supraorbital vessels lymphatic drainage will be in the submandibular group of lymph nodes and nerve supply will be into the supraorbital by, by the supraorbital nerves okay that is the frontal air sinus now talking about the ethmoidal air sinus so uh, ethmoidal air sinus as you saw it will be uh, here these are the ethmoidal air sinus just beside the septum on the lateral wall between the the nasal cavity and the orbit so and they are um, many and they are grouped into anterior group middle group and the posterior group and they are in multiples and uh, these all uh, will be supplied the blood supply will be by the anterior and posterior ethmoidal branches and lymphatic drainage will be into the submandibular as well as the retropharyngeal group of lymph nodes okay uh, the anterior group will be opening into the uh, the um, middle meatus as well as even the middle part will be opening into the middle meatus the posterior will be opening into the superior meatus coming to the the last one that is the sphenoidal air sinus which is within the sphenoid bone these are the two sphenoidal air sinus and it has uh, present within the body of the sphenoid bone and it will be opening uh, into the sphenoidal recess into the superior meatus and the blood supply will be by the posterior ethmoidal vessels and the lymphatic drainage will be into the retropharyngeal group of lymph nodes and the nerve supply will be from the posterior ethmoidal nerves and orbital branch of the retropharyngeal ganglion and the very important relations of the sphenoidal sinus on either side there will be the this is the cavernous sinus and there is internal carotid artery as well as the third fourth and sixth cranial nerves as well as above we can see the pituitary gland as well as the uh, optic chiasma okay coming to the applied aspect it will be related to dns uh, the uh, the septum if it is deviated then epistaxis near the little area and infections are usually common which leads to sinusitis especially common in the maxillary sinus and it is also common for the carcinoma the uh, carcinoma of the uh, maxillary sinus